How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another deck profile. Today we're back with Chimera. Honestly, my favorite deck to play this format and I've been experimenting with it a lot. So I can come up with a new interesting version and this is going to be it. Ubel Chimera. Ubel is completely splashable and today I want to show you the deck profile, the side deck, the extra deck, everything in between because I believe that even once Rage of the Abyss comes out, this deck is going to be a huge competitor and also right now. Because this is the deck I'm playing now. So the techs are very relevant. The side deck is very relevant to the metagame. Now let's just start off. Before we begin, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel as always. And um, yeah, before you ask, this beautiful Chimera playmat is a playmat that I released on Imperium Duelist. I think it's out of stock now. But you can still use code GALZO10 for a lot of custom playmats like this over there. So make sure to check it out. A quick reminder that my new branded sleeves are coming exclusively to Sleeve Chief on Sunday, September 22nd. These new and exclusive branded theme sleeves feature a brand new look of Blazing Cartesia and Aluber. So September 22nd at 8 p.m. CET or 2 p.m. Eastern only on sleevechief.de. And hey, we get an extra 5% off using code GALZO5. We're playing three Apprentice. This is sort of like a no-brainer, really good starter, makes it very easy to go up into Chaos Angel, which in this deck, in my opinion, is just incredible. It's really, really good. Against certain decks, you make it and you win because they usually don't have an out because you make it with Mirror Swords Knight. So it's completely unaffected, indestructible, and we're also playing uh, three Cornfield Codal. And hey, this deck uh, got a lot of reprints now in the in the tins. So you can pick it up uh, relatively cheaply, probably. Then we have, um, you know, the usual stuff. Three Codal, three Mirror Swords Knight. You would usually set out one Swords Knight, honestly, setting out. But it's so important to have because it's your best starter. And it is a light to make the Chaos Angel, which is uh, very impactful against a lot of decks. We're playing three Gazelles. And we're playing one Burfamat this time. I find out through testing, through help of other friends, shout out to Nightfall, that you just need to play the one Burfamat. You don't need two. Two Bricky, especially with other engines. So I've been testing out one, and it's been working out really fine. Master Tau, be very careful of how you play this card, because this card alongside Fiendsmith is dangerous, right? Because this, once you activate the effect, it locks you into illusions from the graveyard. So you cannot revive the engraver anymore. It's not a big deal. You just need to remember that once you play it. And of course, one Diabels, this card carries the deck so much against decks like Tenpai. And even, to be honest, Snake Eye as well right now. You know, Quick Plays are dead. Even against Branded, this card is super, super strong because, you know, you kill their board breakers, essentially. Because everything is Quick Play. You know, Droplets, Eclipses, Wanted, Sangin Kaiman. This card does everything. And it's so, so good, honestly. So um, Diabels is really important here. Usually going second, you will side it out most of the time, but you have other options. Now, three Chimera Fusion, standard. Don't need to explain much about that. Fiendsmith Engine. We have only two Engraver because we have much more access with Necrom and a Dusted Gold, right? So this is your like four Engravers. Um, this is searchable. This is a level five fiend. It is searchable with gazelle. Gazelle can search any level five fiend and Necrom is able to summon a dusted gold, which can link up into Requiem. This is a light fiend. These two are light fiends. You don't, you just don't want to break on like having too many of this because you will be able to get it to the hand. You will be able to summon and access the fiendsmith engine. So it's absolutely fine. And then one lurry and one tract. This is the entire engine. Um, everything is a fiend that can be used as a fusion. So it's always like every fiend is not a hard brick, right? We're playing two Edgem Chain and two Poly and three Patrick. This is really important to have access to. If you get access to this during your combo, it's really, really helpful. You saw with the, the evil heroes, using them as fusion material, getting more and more value. You can't really brick in this deck when you access Patrick. So it is very, very valuable in my opinion. And now for the Ubel engine, just like one spirit, one Ubel, three throne, right? We're also obviously playing one um, of the Phantom in the extra deck, of course. So what's good about just this engine alone, right? What is good about it? So 
let me explain how good it is and how recyclable it is, right? So you usually in Ubel, you can't really recycle the Phantom back into the deck. Here you can one, send one with Burfamat, send two with Area Leader, gain access to the engine. But Nightmare Throne is actually the, the very good one out of these. So you can use Nightmare Throne, of course, to pop the spirit, summon Ubel, shuffle both, make Ubel, right? During your opponent's turn, you use the Ubel, Ubel pops spirit from deck, summons the Ubel. Now, when you use Chimera Fusion to fuse with this Ubel, which of course you can because it is a fiend, it means that by Nightmare Throne's effects, Ubel monster has left the field because of a card effect. It's not your opponent's card effect, which means that once you've resolved it, Nightmare Throne allows you to return this to the hand and you can return it to the extra deck. So essentially you will have another phantom during the next turn. This is why it's so, so good. Obviously this card is broken, but um, this is why the engine works well within this deck. And then we're playing board breakers. This is how we manage to beat the meta. We have hand traps in the side, but we're playing three Eclipse, three Droplet, three Talents. This is a beautiful suite of cards that will help you break through any board. Now for the extra deck, we already saw the Phantom here. This is uh, just your Ubel engine. One Chimera you don't need um, anymore. And then two Burfamad because this is what makes the deck run actually. And you're gonna be able to cycle through all of this. Like you can use this, then turn it into this. And then during your opponent's turn, you can banish this to summon an Illusion Fiend or Beast from the grave. Then you can banish this to summon this back. It's just a cycle, basically. The Fiendsmith uh, requirements, Aerial Eater, super important in this deck. Necro Quip, of course, just to make the Caesar. But Aerial Eater, Fiend Extender, you can banish cards, then summon them back with Birth of Man. And of course, it sends you your side cards mainly that you need to play, but it also sends you the Necrom if you if you are in a pinch. So it gets access to everything. Um, Magnum, of course. Guardian Chimera, of course. And Chaos Angel. Just really, really solid in this deck. I am playing Lars because you can just negate board breakers with this card. You can chain Chimera Fusion to a droplet even, negate the droplet. It's really, really good. And then, of course, uh, Wave King High Caesar, just a broken card. And then for the links, one SP, one Muckwrecker, really important, one Requiem, and one Sequence. This is everything that we play. We just use the Fiendsmith engine to extend, and I'll show you what we do with it a little bit later. This is the extra deck. And now for the side deck, this is where we have some interesting stuff. So when we go second, we obviously want to see a lot of board breakers, but we want to see a lot of engine as well, right? So three Malcharmi Perulias allow you to gain access to more cards alongside Phantasmi. Why is Phantasmi so strong in this deck? Because starting off your turn with a monster on the board, this is why I used to, I used to play Fenrir in this deck, is so important because you immediately threaten Guardian Chimera. When you have this, you can just activate Polly and they kind of have to negate it, right? You draw two, you have targeting negation for, you know, Imperms, Valor, stuff like that on your engine, which is just very valuable. And then a nice thing to draw into is of course Nibiru, right? So these are the, the monster hand traps here. And we have Wangu and we have the, the Ubel Hate and the Tenpai Hate. So in terms of the Ubel Hate, this card is, is actually pretty interesting against Ubel. So if you don't know what this card does, if a monster with 1400 or less attack is normal or special summoned while you control this card, mandatory effect, destroy those monsters with 1400 or less attack, right? And this is not once per turn. So essentially, if you think about the entire Ubel engine, it's mostly fiends with zero attack and defense, right? And this is not once per turn, it is mandatory. So even, right, even when you go against Ubel, you have the Dark Backening Beast, which you pop immediately. You have every single Ubel you pop immediately and force them to, you know, summon from deck, right? So it will be extremely awkward. It kind of puts them under a lock. So think about this. Let's say they have Phantom of Ubel, right? They summon the Phantom, this triggers immediately. They either let it go or negate. If they negate, it destroys spirits from deck, summons the Ubel. This immediately triggers popping the Ubel. Ubel summons Incarnate, this triggers to pop it. They don't have anything else to summon, they need to summon another Phantom to recycle the materials, 
which also gets popped immediately. This is not once per turn. So think about that. Um, Archfiend Eris, we've gone through this already. This, um, you can send this through Burfamat or the Aerial Eater. And this searches any Archfiend spell trap or any Archfiend card, which you activate, you search this for. And neither player can summon monsters with the same card type as they already control. Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Exceed, or Link. So essentially, this against Tenpai, they cannot kill you. And it's a little bit better than Kuri Photon that I was playing previously. So this is your package against the, in my opinion, the two strongest decks of, uh, of this meta. And then lastly, some nice uh, going first cards. We have um, There Can Be Only One and Fiendsmith Desiree, which you have room for. And this is good against board breakers, against Tenpai, against anything that you want to have this, right? Because we don't have any Fiendsmith fusions. You can just do whatever you want. And lastly, for going second, I really like Chimera, the Illusion Beast. Um, I missed this in the main deck. This card kills your opponent really, really quickly. And I really like having this going second. This is a very valuable card in my opinion. So this goes in the side when I'm second. And yeah, this is the the Chimera, you Bell, Fiendsmith deck. I think it really like rocks. I think Wangu is insane in this meta and uh, the Abels as well. This deck just has access to so many kind of like disgusting cards. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Leave your thoughts, leave a like, subscribe, of course. If you want to check out Imperium Duelist using code GALZO10, check out the, those accessories. These are premium. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.